Bialystok, 1939. An industrial city with a Jewish majority. Factories owned by Jews. Jewish workers. A network of Jewish schools. Jewish newspapers. Jewish welfare and cultural organizations. A vital, vibrant Jewish community. Of its 91,000 inhabitants, 55,000 are Jews. The factory chimney stacks, the modern houses, the bustling traffic in the streets of this provincial capital, all these give Bialystok the atmosphere of a large metropolis, even though it is only of middling size. Its beginnings are in the 14th century, and it became a city only in the 18th century. The earliest Jewish documents speak of Bialystok near Tiktin. For Tiktin was the city in this region, and contained the largest and most important Jewish community. But in the 18th century, Bialystok was declared a city, and Tiktin became a town near Bialystok. The streets and houses look western. The wooden houses, which were in Bialystok until the middle of the 18th century, all burned in the Great Fire, and since then, only brick houses have been built. In the middle of Kosciusko Square stands the clock tower. The clock was built by a Jewish watchmaker. At its base is a busy commercial center. Here are the many cramped and narrow Jewish shops, selling haberdashery, houseware, clothing, and footwear. Jews also manage the large stores and modern emporiums built around the square. The peasants and farmers from the surrounding area all come to Bialystok. Here in the market is another meeting place between the Jewish majority and the Polish minority. But a casual glance will not easily register the constant efforts of the Poles to win positions in the city's commerce and to displace the Jews. Not always by commercial means either. Here, Polish students have attacked pupils of the Hebrew high school who were marching to the accompaniment of their band in the Lagba Omer procession to the forest outside the city. Not all the Jews are rich. The Piaski Quarter, for example, is where the poorer Jews live. Wherever you go, in the central market, in the richer and poorer suburbs, you will meet Jews. Not far from the market are the two central synagogues. Here is the square named after Dr. Yosef Chazanovich, one of the founders of the Chovave Zion, Lovers of Zion movement. This is the old synagogue. Its elders relate that the women's section was built by the Duchess Brunitsky. And this is the great synagogue, with a dome in the eastern style. Beside these synagogues are two yeshivas, to which students come from the entire region. One is the Navaradok yeshiva of the Musar movement, and the other is the Bialystoker yeshiva. The Jewish Community Council building is the next to the Russian church, which is empty most of the time. The council building bustles with activity. In this house, the creator of the Esperanto language, Dr. Ludwig Zamenhof, was born and lived. The street is named after him though the Jews prefer to call it Yatkegas because of the many Jewish butcher shops in it. The great synagogue belongs to the butchers, but the study house is called Poltavoy because a regimental band played at its opening. The Bialystokers are proud of their large library, which is named after Shalom Aleichem. It contains 50,000 books. Wunzerleben, Our Life, and Bialystoker Zeitung, the Bialystok newspaper, the two Jewish newspapers of Bialystok. The new building of the Hebrew High School, where a thousand pupils study, is the pride of the city's Jewish education system. This evening, the Jewish theater is presenting Mishugayim Tanz, Dance of the Madmen. Lodgings for the ill and institutions of mutual help, a trade school where the language of instruction is Yiddish, and five Jewish high schools. These are a further expression of organized community life. A weaving factory, one of many in Bialystok. Jewish grinding mills and textile works. 
The first weavers were soldiers from Saxony and Germany who remained in the city after the Napoleonic Wars. Jewish capitalists helped them set up their textile works, but very quickly Jews learned the trade and took the place of the German experts as weavers and spinners in factories and as subcontractors in their own cramped homes. The many Jewish workers organized in a trade union made their mark on Jewish Bialystok. The Jewish workers organization called a strike as early as 1882 and at the end of the 19th century there was already an underground newspaper of the Jewish workers movement. made use of two Jewish health organizations, Jose and Toz. Toz established a convalescent home, and Jose runs recreation camps in the country for workers' children in the summer. Children from Jewish and Gentile schools play together. The Jewish children come from schools of Tarbut, Tzisha, and Tachimoni, the three trends of Jewish education, two in Hebrew and one in Yiddish. This is the famous Bialystoker pretzel, the bread roll loved by all Bialystokers, young and old. The Jews find shade among the trees and flower beds in the gardens of Duke Branitsky's palace. This is the last trace of the huge estate where the Duke built the city center on the bank of the Biala River. From the estate, a city grew, and from the city grew a prosperous Jewish community, with its public institutions and schools, its cultural and welfare organizations, a community vital and active and successful in many spheres. Through the flowers in the beds, one does not see the approaching storm. This is a brief glance at Jewish Bialystok in the summer of 1939. 